Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ladder Battle cast. This is a series between Hero spawning in the top right hand corner, Snow down in the bottom right, sponsored by Neon Marble Rust, which is a game that I've been playing a bit on stream, made by a fan of the channel and a fan of Brood War. Um, an early access title that is uh, free to play and more about that a little bit later on the series from today is from 2022 a little bit of an older series but these two ASL champion level players have been near that for a very long time I mean more so a hero I would say hero has been ASL champion quality for such a long time. It's kind of ridiculous that he hasn't gotten an ASL title yet. But really, Snow has come into his own recently. But back in 2022, he was not nearly as good at PVZ. So I thought it'd be interesting. Oh, excuse me, today to take a look at Snow's PVZ. We've got quite a few games here. His PVZ from the past and uh, see kind of how it measures up uh, to Heroes play from the past because I think these two guys are pretty much dead even in 2024. I couldn't say who would win, for example, in the best of seven. Um, but we've only got a few games here to take a look at today and I have to imagine that hero is gonna take this series but um, looks like we've got the gateway in the front and then Nexus with an probe scout after Nexus this is an interesting build order we're taking a look at here the map is butter Hasn't been in the map rotation for a while, but there's only really one base that you can potentially take here for your third. As a Zerg, this one is so close. It's kind of like a Blitz Y. It, it really is a lot like Blitz Y, isn't it? The two player aspect is there. You've got the high ground, um, potential third base towards your opponent and the low ground third base with the two entrances at the top left. Uh, just a, quite a few more bases on this map. And uh, these high ground areas are interesting. Plus there's no catwalk through the middle of the map. Uh, Butter was a decent map, honestly. I, I think it was a pretty, a pretty good swing that the map makers took at making a good, like, ASL quality uh, tournament map for two players, right? A two-player tournament map. Not bad. I think Blitz Y might be a little better, uh, but uh, you know, not a not a terrible, terrible map by any stretch. We've got a lot of lings being produced here by Hero. I think he's gonna ling all in actually. Really, haven't seen too much scouting coming from from Snow. He's been getting just chased around a lot, and he's sitting back at home, very, very defensively with a really good wall set up here. I'm very surprised that uh, Hero wants to ling all in, but the cannon was very late. And with the cannon being this late right now, I think we might see Hero just bust through and take this easily. Hmm. Yeah, this is maybe something that, you know, Snow is struggling with. He's not going to be able to throw down that forge in the way you usually want to drop the forge just behind where the gateway dies so that you can keep that alive uh, or so that you can keep that that hole plugged up but looks like everything's gonna go down here he tries to get the good surround on the uh, lings there with the probe gg is called yeah I'm a bit of a rough first game here let's just jump back for a second and see what snow actually saw in this game you can see <clears throat> he sent in the probe and saw just a few links popping nothing out of the ordinary But he didn't 
seem to have the confidence, I guess, to keep this probe active and being sent, you know, back into the main. Well, look at Hero just blocking it so well here. He really is on top of that, stopping the probe from getting back in. I don't know how orange... How is orange color available on this map? That makes no sense. In, in the newest maps, like, for example, Apocalypse, you can't pick orange because it's so hard to see on the tile set. But for whatever reason, somehow Hero got orange. It's kind of crazy. You can all, you almost just can't even see stuff when it's running around. That's pretty wild. But he came back in. He didn't see anything or any lings until the lings hit his front here. You see just how blind Snow was in this game, and he was being pretty darn greedy. He went for Cybernetoscore and Stargate before the Photon Cannon. Yeah, what you want to try to do is put the probe right here. And then right as the gateway falls, you try to build a forge like right there. It's one hex back, so the, the lings are not in the way immediately when the gateway dies. But it's, you have to be like frame perfect. Otherwise, the lings will run forward. And actually, a good Zerg player will be, you know, with a one or two lings, like right clicking the moment that this goes down, right clicking past here to try and time it out so that the lings start running forward immediately. But, uh, you know, he wasn't able to get that down. The greed is punished here. And we could just see that, you know, back in 22, 2022. Definitely Hero getting the, the drop on Snow. Let's jump into our next game, see if uh, see if Snow can bring this one back. Well, Snow got a bit outmaneuvered in that last game, but Hero really doing an excellent job of zoning the probe away from getting any scouting information. Very hard to do. The probe is such a slippery little unit with just four lings tough to make sure that it doesn't get any good information near your natural or even slip into your main base but hero managing to make it happen and he pulled out the correct build for the correct moment there the ling all in works out brilliantly to shut down a protoss player who's being too greedy and back in 2022 those type of greedy plays were starting to come into fashion that's around the time when mini was having some of his deepest runs in the ASL uh, when he was really abusing Zerg players by doing things like getting a gateway and then a Cybernetic score before Forge uh, being super hyper greedy uh, and I think that that was probably what motivated Snow in that last game to go such a greedy style that type of uh, meta shift caused him to think he could get away with that. But, you know, Hero just showing that it can absolutely be punished. You have to have perfect scouting. And if you're getting denied the scouting information, like if you have full scouting information, yeah, you could probably get away with what Snow did last game. But if you're getting denied, you have to be reactive. You have to be able to go, okay, I can't see what's happening right now. I need to be a little bit more safe. But uh, as you can see, Snow just just going along with the build. Not really reacting. And that is something that I think he has really corrected in recent times. Like leading up to this ASL, he has played so fantastic in ACM. He's upped his game in terms of his pvz by leaps and bounds and i think those are the, the the missing links in his game that have helped to evolve him like filling in those gaps have brought him to that next level the final form of snow i'm not sure if we've seen it just yet but getting over here to try and block this hatchery we're not actually ready to throw down the hatch right now so he's actually just focusing. Oh, he threw down a hatch in the main. Very interesting stuff. Throwing down the hatch in the main. I think he just scouted the gateway first. He's doing a good job pushing back this probe. 
And he's actually, yeah. He was hoping to maybe kill that probe, I think. Links are gonna come out now. I'm gonna go ahead and check the third immediately, but this is funny. I think we're gonna see four hatch Hydra here. Four hatch Hydra on three base. Um, not quite as strong as four hatch Hydra with four bases, but it's still gonna be formidable. Looks like he lets the probe run by. That's not good. The probe uh, slipping by here. See all the lings are going to re return. Now he knows everything. Knows absolutely everything. So yeah, this is actually what I was talking about. We've got the Cybernetic Core before the Forge. Snow. Gets in. He sees the double hatchery here in the main. We've got the fourth hatch there. Let's see how Hero plays this out. I don't think he's going to be able to send out these Zealots here. And I don't think Hero can Ling bust like he did last game. He doesn't have gas, so he can't really get speed here early on. We're going to be pretty safe to go Stargate then Forge. Holy greed. Yeah, this is 2022 for you guys. The Protoss were getting a little bit wild in 2022. Pulling out some really interesting stuff. I wonder if this type of style will come back in or if it's been shut down too hard by Zerg players. Zerg players, I feel like the, the Hydra Bust meta has come back around again as of late. Slowly filtered back into the meta where we've got these speed Hydra Busts. Um, sorry, what I mean to say is Ling Speed into Hydra Bust, which is kind of a new thing. Right here into Evolution Chamber, plus one going to be started. Almost the same time as plus one for Protoss. A very quick plus one here. Going to get that Evo Chamber up and running. Surprised he's not going for armor. Uh, with a lot of these builds, you will go for the armor, but this is a four hatch Hydra. So wanting to get those Hydralisk upgrades right away. There are builds where you will um, forego the Spore Colony here. Just get a couple of Hydras and get armor. <clears throat> Hydra Den is now on the way. This is interesting. He's got the plus one upgrade almost halfway before even starting the uh hydra den just the one gas but a second gas is coming up here got the corsair spotting this out he's looking for potential pickoffs the back of the pack here the zealots heading across the map if one of them well, one thing i like to do is if this is on an a click you can come up from behind and the and aggro one of the zealots and then the zealots start to turn around and, and chase the lings then you can jump on top of that and try to kill it a good protoss player will never allow that to happen but if you're in uh, ranks like me if you're somewhere around b rank it's definitely something that can be done we're going up to six hatches here and starting hydralis production as well plus one's not done neither is speed and we've completely switched out of Corsair, so oh, he's uh, making that transition. Two DTs are on the way right now, and we just got Lair. So the DT is a great play in this position. And a base. Oh, I, I really like this from Snow. I think he's figured this out perfectly. So just think about this, guys. He sees everything. He sees that he's got this base. He's gone to six hatch Hydra. He knows that Hero would like to put on pressure here. Especially if you're going to take a really quick third base. He would like to get over here and put on pressure. But he swept the map and made sure that there's no overlords on his side. It's cross map. So the overlord time to cross is crazy long. So he just gets DTs and takes this super quick third. And this just can't be punished. We're going to have so many Hydras that are completely useless. They're not going to be able to do anything. Not until this uh, uh, Overlord Speed is done. And he can't really take a base now either. 
He has to slowly move an overlord over here to take another base. So we're going to have snow on three base. Uh, way faster than normal. On way fewer gates. Look, he went to third three base on three gateways. Four gateways, sorry. That is a little bit wild. Usually you'll see the Protoss player go to eight gates before trying to grab a third base. But here, three, four gateways gets the third base and he's completely safe one uh, text little storm boy over here gonna be hanging chilling out we've got the hydras coming across the map now the dt needs to be a part of this fight we got to get the dt out there in the front seas bringing the overlords now we need dt where's the dt this is the plan this is is this not the plan we need the dt here the dt right here messes this up so badly it's kind of insane he does have one storm that's that's it that's the only storm he has oh my goodness please tell me <laughs> he's bringing that dt back he's hiding it over here i don't understand guys i'm lost i'm lost i don't get it finally we're gonna have overlords but this this could have been a brick he could have busted this he could have easily busted look at how many hydras he's got uh, the overload's gonna fly in and just die Dude, that looks like my game right there. You're just sending overloads across the map and flying into their death gonna kill one gateway So he will limit the production a little bit. We're gonna have to go back up to eight here There it is So he will get to eight gates, but a fourth base is coming down here for hero and behind this he was droning hard So he wasn't oh my god 11 overloads on the way Dude, he's going to go to like 150 supply uh, at least here uh, as these overlords pop out. 170, I guess. That is crazy. And tr triple evolution chamber right off the bat. 174. He was at like 90 or 80 supply. <laughs> and now he's, he opened up that supply so much. 11 overlords on the way. You rarely ever see that from a pro player, but there it is. Um, drones are being just shuffled out here really really quick and a dt trying to slip its way in i can't believe this dt wasn't over here like what are you even thinking there it is it goes down and uh snow i mean he's still in a good spot he didn't die to that push which he probably should have uh considering what he what he pulled out there is kind of crazy um we don't have a spire big thing to note right here no spire at all so you would be very uh scared of a shuttle at this point shuttle is going to be super super strong let's take a look at the upgrades we got plus one but we've got triple upgrade on the way right now hero busting up to 70 drones holy crap only 58 probes right now and we've been on three nexus for quite some time look he's actually not making any probes at all just gonna stick on 58 so yeah i feel the i feel the the kind of rough pvz level that was coming from snow at 20 in 2022 i really feel like you wouldn't be making these mistakes uh in the current year in 2024 he is just so good in every regard in this matchup now it's it's really impressive to see his overall transformation and um and leveling up that he's done now look at this he split his army by accident some of it went this way some of it this went this way so some dragoons do go down a little bit painful there he's gonna try and make his way over here to the top left kill this hatchery but it's kind of a bait i think it's kind of baiting them over here seeing if he'll take it um Looks like he's not going to bring the whole army up there to kill it. So that's pretty good for Snow. I'm going to keep the army mobile here and keep reinforcing as well. Pushing up this ramp is a little bit rough, but the lurkers aren't burrowed in time. So maybe there's an opportunity here. We'll get two lurkers there just for a couple of storms. And this is what Snow does very, very well. Uh, he's always done this quite well, is just skirmishing with the... Uh, uh, lurkers and hydras in positions like this now while this is happening hero is going to go around this army he's actually going to completely surround this 
and i don't know that snow can actually back out of this position great storm down here a lot of that's gonna get picked off um storm available over here on this side that's a lot of lings coming up i think we just saw crackling finish up as well there's a shuttle coming through these uh dragoons really do have to back away so many of them are gonna end up going down Ooh, dude that was a lot of dragoons that just went down in the supply really evened up just now not looking fantastic here for snow although he did get his fourth base up no probes have been sent over here just yet bit of an oversight from our protoss player and these small problems they seem like minor things but they are going to add up over time you can see hero is getting into his own fifth base here we've got two one now are the upgrades looking two two not too bad we've only got one forge okay we do have two forges but we only got one of them spinning right now which is a mistake 100 percent. you do want to get more going okay plasma shields on the way not going to go for that third upgrade on the armor because of course there are going to be defilers out soon Ooh, the storms are at the back of this army it looks like hero might be able to get on top of this but these are some great retreating storms oh the templar retreating around the left hand side is so painful can he bring them together to actually get the storms off that they need to get there's another good storm yeah he's actually getting most of them off i thought he was gonna end up losing a bunch of these uh templar as they're running back but you know he manages to get the majority of the storms off and he will be able to back up in time to you know reinforce this army now hero has a pretty good spot here in the center right looks like he's bringing some lings around the left hand side here make sure that no additional base bases come up in this location and we're gonna see defilers out any moment here where are the defilers a drop gonna come through here we do have a storm ready to go Still, it's popping are we gonna go for the storm no nope. storm right there dropping that on the lings and hydras here does pick that back up again might be able to get a storm this mineral line can he get it oh one drone only pretty good pull away there from hero we'll keep the majority of those alive very nicely done how are we doing do we have a spire yet dude we still don't have a spire at all I've talked to some pretty good Protoss players. They all say that you need a Spire um, in this match of 100%. You can't just not ever get it. Uh, you're leaving your game open quite wide. And I tend to agree, but Hero is just not going to build it, I guess, this game. You are very vulnerable to drops when you play like this, but Hero is just so big right now. I don't know if it truly is going to matter. He has so much of the map covered with overlords he's got such great vision he's gonna see dropships coming no matter where they get sent from big plague comes down the first plague of the game plagues are fantastic in this matchup but dude the storm right there absolutely crushing those lurkers and wait a moment even though we've got these beautiful plagues coming through i think maybe snow can push through here and I don't know that hero can stop this from happening if he can surround this army or not bringing in the lings and hydras from multiple angles a lot of these units are plagued so they don't have a lot of health and he is going to be able to shove everything back hero just too good man he's going to be able to surround and kill all of this army and he did lose some drones but at the same time he managed to get this base up here in the bottom right which is a huge huge moment a huge win here for hero getting that base up he should be able to transfer some workers from one of these locations down to it that bottom right but his uh his overall minerals is are very very low right now another base coming up here for snow he's gonna try and take this kind of third base location for the bottom right Sending zealots around the map, but lings and lurkers gonna meet them. That counterattack is ill fated. Ooh, my goodness. There's so many lurkers here in a big old stack. Great split, though, from Hero. Really, really good. 
keeping the majority of those alive for now. Can't believe this Corsair is still alive. This Bisu Corsair here doing work still in that 18 minutes in the game. Kind of wild. But that is still a thing right now. It's still flying around. It's now got that one plasma shield. Which I assure you does make a difference. Joking jokes, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and run in towards the center right once again. But the real problem is this base down here. And the fact that Protoss does not have a base in the top left. We need to either kill this and this. Or split the map in half by taking this up here. Those are our two options and he hasn't really been able to do either. Uh, maybe he can get up here in the coming minutes. And actually, look at this. The Nidus Canal is there, but no lurkers here on this high ground. Maybe he can get in here. As long as he gets on top of the ramp, he should be good. The top of the ramp is so strong for Protoss. If he can just get up here and drop storms on everything that comes to reinforce, you should be all right. Dropping storms on some of these lurkers. The lurkers are going down. The army, though, that was supposed to get up on top of the ramps, not able to get up there, and so much suddenly pops through the Nidus. Where did all that army come from? Came from the rally point here of Hero, and he clears out everything really, really well. Four kill Lurker here from the high ground, able to pick off these probes, and now Snow gotta be regretting this decision here to take the base on the low ground rather than try to get up here start building cannons in this location, you're going to be way better off. Losing a lot of probes right now. We'll have to transfer away. Against Hero's got 71 right. Dude, Hero is going to overwhelm, man. He has so much going on. And he's about to hit 3-3. Three, three. It's so, so scary. Once the, the Lings hit that 3-3, three, three, they do so much damage. It's wild. You have to have, like, I would say... Five, six Archons in your army at that point to, to really start to mop up the Lings. Otherwise, they will trade pretty efficiently at that uh, with, with those upgrades. Even if it's Zealots and Dragoons like this, they're still going to kill some Zealots. It's not like they're just going to get splashed. You just keep sending Lings like this. A group of 12 is going to kill something. With that Crackling, they still will get some value. And they are very, very cheap at this point in the game. He's got so many bases and so many hatches. It's really not a problem to lose, you know, two, three groups of lings to kill off, you know, a, a group of zealots. Not a big deal at all. <clears throat> so he is going to come through here on the left-hand side. Does not want to allow Snow to get this base up and operational. The center left is the target right now. Some lurkers running forward. They're getting very clumped up, so he does back away. His control really fantastic this game, honestly. And the overall, like, Overlord spread is kind of insane. He's done such a good job of just covering everywhere on the map. He kind of knows where Snow is at all times. He's gonna run up here, drop in the lurkers. Great storm on those. Damn. If he had one more storm, he could wipe up all those lurkers, but he just doesn't have it right now. And it looks like Hero might be able to push through. Yeah, he does. He surrounds and pushes through to the center left and takes away this game. And you can see that even with a pretty good start, Hero's still just dominating over Snow back in 2022. His PVZ just wasn't quite there yet. It really wasn't. And it's crazy to watch the PVZ that we have from Snow in 2024 and things like the KCM. What he's been able to pull off there in context with what he was doing just two short years ago. Really, really impressive from him. But the same goes for Hero, man. Hero just crazy, crazy good. Even though... Protoss was able to get such a quick third base this game. He wasn't able to really capitalize on his mass hydro production, the four hatch hydra in the early game. 
he still just macroed it out so so well here and overwhelms snow well let's jump into our next game guys we've got a couple more to go this video has been sponsored by Neon Marble Rust. It's an indie RTS that's being developed by a fan of Brood War. This is an early access free to play game, so it's not quite a finished product yet, but the developers are hoping for more RTS players to join the group. But the basic parameters have already been set. There's three races, Neon, Marble, and Rust, which you control, gather resources, make armies, pretty similar to StarCraft, but more of a cyberpunk, maybe Tron type feel. In the coming weeks, we're going to be trying out the game, playing a bit of it on stream as well. There's a link in the description down below where you can get the game on Steam. The creators of the game are very passionate and they want to create the best possible RTS. So they'd love to have some more seasoned RTS players try the game out, give them some feedback. I'd really appreciate it as well. Go down into the description. Again, click my link. Every one of you who downloads the game supports me directly. So I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you to Neon Marble Rust for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the action. Third game of the series here with snow in the bottom right, hero in the bottom left. Same map. I believe we're back here on Vermeer, if I'm not mistaken. I actually like this map a lot. I'm a little bit sad that it's out of the map pool already. It was a pretty stellar map. Maybe it'll be back in the future. Right now we've got Radeon, which is the other AMD map. I guess they didn't want to have two AMD maps in the map pool, rather. Just one per season. Hopefully they continue to make those. I think that's fun. Honestly, that's a big sign that this game is very healthy. In a very healthy place um that the community is there is that we ha still have map makers and even you know sponsors who are willing to help make maps i th i just think that's awesome i'm actually a big fan of amd for for doing something like that i think that's a it's a really s a stellar thing to do and a great way to promote your company as well um Whoever is at the marketing team for AMD honestly deserves a raise, I think. But enough of that, we've got four links popping out here. And a gateway first from Snow. He sends the Zealot back home immediately upon seeing four links. Now, this is kind of the older style, I think, for how Protoss players like to deal with this. Um... You don't really see this as much anymore, but this was like the dead standard way of dealing with the overpool uh, with the gateway first before it was just get the nexus and block with a probe and zealot on the ramp. Pretty much everybody used to do this, but it's kind of fallen away a little bit. Players now seem to prefer to throw down the forge and put zealot and zealot um in the wall it seems like that's become more popular um <clears throat> for various reasons i guess uh, this is a kind of a dangerous dance what we're seeing here oh oh ling just getting stuck there bit of a brain fart of a ling one zealot coming across we are gonna make four more lings just to make sure that we can deal with that gonna target down the probe very nice control here by Hero so, thus far. Yeah, he loses one Ling, but he's going to be fine. Two Zealots are now here, and a third arrives to meet him. Four all together. With the Forge coming down back at home. Will he retreat straight to the wall? Looks like he will. And he forced two extra Lings. Or two extra, yeah, two extra sets of Lings. So, not bad, not bad. However, we have a Hydralis Den on the way, and we didn't get confirmation uh, that there was a Lair. So... A little bit a little bit rough right now for snow he's got a good number of zealots but he might end up getting 973 to here he just doesn't have the information uh to to figure out what exactly is coming a lot of protoss players will actually hide 
Like, let's say at that moment when he saw those lings, if he had hid a zealot over here, he could come back around and make his way into the natural. You can see Hero didn't really pay attention to something like that. Um, try to figure out if something like that was happening, but moves like that are actually essential. Uh, that or doing something like as you see the lings here and you decide to pull back your zealots, send a probe up on the map. Just send it out here somewhere. And then you can send that probe in just a little bit later and find out if there are hydras being made. And yeah, it just really seems like snow at this point was not quite understanding uh, the necessity of getting that scouting information. And he's going to get 973 to here. It's pretty, actually pretty rough to 973 um, when you have gateway first gateway first is not really what you want to throw hydra into yeah it's not it's not really the best and oh goodness hero actually letting the overlord get cooked a little bit here letting the hydra get or letting the overlord get hit quite a lot neutron flares really um roasting that overlord down to just 100 hp that could be a concern here as uh things start to heat up in the natural two forward is gonna go over here see if they can pick something off i think we're gonna make double forge in the main so far just one on uh in the main coming up probably will end up going for that double forge though has enough cannons here. Four cannons is definitely enough to hold with this number of zealots. As long as you're paying attention, making sure that there's no a big swell of hydras going to pop out here back at home. Overlord, you're going to take some more damage. This one that's been badly hurt here, though, is at the front. We have zealot speed now, so we could look to see a snow just shove out pretty soon with those zealots and try to kill both overlords if you kill both overlords then you're almost a hundred percent guaranteed not to get busted all you need is a dt you kill these two overlords you make one dt and then you are completely safe completely safe you no longer need to you know really be concerned about the potential of that hydra bust being reinforced and and breaking through your lines now we've got six hatch hydra production coming up here for hero plenty of drones being made right now going up to 37 but he's gonna have to hold this pressure got uh some zealots making their way over here towards the third at the same time gonna dive here in the natural see if you can get some overlord kills no he actually backs away from that a little bit of a missed opportunity there because all the hydras were pulled away from this position. Okay, he sees that the overlords have been abandoned here over by the middle. Might move to try and take these out. That can be a good move. If you pick off a couple of overlords during this transitionary phase, it really does hurt a lot. The hydra bus player. Lurker on the way here. So again, Overlord kills are going to be very painful. It's really important as your Lurker upgrade finishes that you start a bunch of Overlords to make sure that you have the open supply necessary to drop those Lurkers. They do cost two supply per Lurker. Very intensive. You can only hold four Lurkers per Overlord. So very supply intensive. So a total supply is actually three with the hydralis included. So let's make their way over here to the natural. Oh god, Hero's not paying attention to this. Oh no, Hero. Kind of letting things slip through his fingers right now. As the zealots run into the main. This is a horrible feeling right here. But he has a lurker egg on the ramp. Which is going to buy him a little bit of time. To be able to bring his forces back. Very lucky that he managed to get this Hydra that was just popping out onto that position. I'll get that into the spot in time. 
so that he could block that. There's the Spire coming up. That has been spotted by Snow. Snow now knows that there is a Spire here. It's all going to run up into the main, try to deal some damage. But overall, taking a look at the supplies, I think Hero's, you know, he's held this well enough. And he's macroing heavily enough that he's going to be 100% fine here. He's definitely going to have the correct number of drones to really beef up that army and take this next fight. Are we going to go? Wow, we are going to go mutas. Damn. All right. Five mutas being made. We know that he stopped. That the Protoss player stopped making Corsair a long time ago. Ooh, this is not good. Letting Zealots just run in and die. Kind of piecemeal here. That is... What? We sure about that, Snow? Was he, like, checking chat or something like that? What even happened during that? You can't be losing all those zealots right now. They're so important for checking for bases. You know, denying hatcheries being placed down. Um, And just threatening counterattacks. If you can bring all your hydras together at the front, you know that he's got nothing on the map. It makes it so much easier to play this. Now, there are a few more zealots out here, but it's not that many. And we've got pretty good amount of hydras in the rally point here. I should be able to shut this down. He is going to be able to target down a few drones during this. And, you know, picking up a three, four, five drones, something like that. Not too bad. Not too bad for this, uh, you know, 5-6 Zealot counterattack, but his army back at home is very small now. He's been bleeding off Zealots a little bit by a little bit, over and over again for quite some time. No mining on the third gas here. I think that might be a mistake from Hero, although he did lose quite a bit of drones here. He's kind of re-droning at the moment. Does need to get that mining going once again. However, we did get into Lurker, so we need that gas. Otherwise, we're just not going to be able to afford everything that we need right here. Okay, going to dive on top of the Templar. Great dodge there. Fantastic dodge. Managing to pick off all of the Templar. Oh, boy. That was a great storm, but now there's no Templar left. And the Hydras are in between the Dragoons and the home base. So, your hero's going to clear all of this right now. This is such a big win for Hero. Um, the reinforcements do make their way up. And he will actually flank the Hydras. Picking off most of them. But dude, the Dragoon count has been completely reset here. We're only on 7 Dragoons at this point. There's probably another 10 that got picked off there. So, really not feeling good right now. But with the lack of an army coming out of hero at the moment it, it is a good time to grab that third base look at how look at the timing on this third we're at 13 minutes you know last game he took a third at what was it seven seven and a half minutes just for context how quick the third base was last game kind of crazy but even that super quick third base not wasn't able to or what wasn't enough to bring snow to a victory i don't know if this later third is going to be enough for snow here he has a much better path for uh actually fighting here he can come through this direction you can sit set your protoss army up here and take this base and then as you push towards the natural you could take this base as well um, it is a little bit hard to hold, but there is like a clear pathway that you can take if you want to push and uh, take bases behind it, which could be beneficial to snow in this case. More probes being sent up here. We've got a probe advantage at the moment. Here we're going to check this base up here. This is actually a great time to start to push forward as snow. You see this much up in the top right hand corner you know that there's not really going to be a whole lot kind of waiting for you here but he's not going to take that moment snow a little bit worried about getting surrounded perhaps wants to sit in a more defensive position while he waits for his economy to really get online three base now 
until he can grab that fourth. Probably this one right here. But we'll see. Seven. Ooh. Nice pick off on that lurker. Just focusing that down. Making the best of a very bad situation. And I think that's the name of the game here. Snow. Not feeling very confident to move forward right now. Hero really feels like he's in control. Has so many Hydras coming. Just so many Hydras. He did finally start mining the gas again. Very important that he does so. Fourth gas could come up here shortly as well. Oh boy. That is so, that is a crazy number of Hydra. Okay, not able to pay attention to everything here. Hero does eat a big storm down at the bottom side, but dude, there's so many. Oh my, where are the storms? There's a big storm right there in the middle. But dude, Hero has way too much. We got to see perfect storms here, and we need more zealots as well to fight with this army. Dragoons alone are not going to cut it against Mass Hydra. And another round's going to make its way up here. I think Hero could surround this entire army. The skirmishing just not going Snow's way. Dude, Snow just feels so outclassed by Hero in this matchup. It's kind of wild. It is really quite crazy to see. I know that Snow had a very bad... Overall win rate in this matchup for a long time, but I didn't remember quite how bad it was. The mismatch just a couple of years ago, you wouldn't imagine it if you watched them play uh, in 2024. That'll have to be a, a future series to find some snow versus hero in 2024. Now he's making one last push here. He's got to crush this before everything goes down at his third base, but looks like hero going to clear out all the probes before that can happen. And snow, I mean, I think he wants to desperate, just do a desperate counterattack. Uh, he is going to have this fourth base, which 31 probes uh, basically are going to be saturating that one base because we have almost nothing left in our main and natural. So you can definitely saturate one base with 30 pros, but it's not ideal. Definitely not ideal. Hero, what does he have left in his rally? Not a lot. Just a few Hydras. But he should be able to bring back Hydra Lurker from the front line. Maybe he can surround this army. Pick it off. At least slow it down. That's really the name of the game right now. Hero, after doing all that damage, just needs to slow Snow a bit. And I think he's done that. He's done that well enough that the Lurkers are going to pop. And Hero's just going to get massively ahead here. Uh, he's actually... He is already massively ahead, but what I'm saying is that he'll be able to leverage that lead. If, for example, he wasn't able to slow anything down, and then uh, Snow got in here on top of the rallies and on top of the eggs, then all the probe kills over here at the center right wouldn't have really mattered uh, if Snow is just able to rally forward on top of the rally of Hero. But now that he's managed to secure this and he's bought that time, he can actually leverage this lead. And there's really not much that Snow can do about it. He's going to try and take another base. He's going to try and run around with Zealots. He's going to hold this area and not build any cannons whatsoever because he desperately needs army supply. But Hero is still running away with that army supply. 40 ahead right now. And Snow is... A little bit dead in the water here. Let's see the final battle to see whether Storm can carry this boy across the finish line. Uh, Storm is good, man. Storm is a good unit. But I don't know if there's any unit good enough to take on Hero at this point. Maybe Reavers with damage. If he had a bunch of Reavers with damage up here on this high ground, I could see a situation where Hero tried to take a fight with that. You try to run up this ramp and the Reavers just explode everything. Definitely Snow Reavers could be up to the task, but with just a few storms and a low number of Dragoons, 
You know, taking a bad trade here doesn't really matter. Hero's just gonna run up that ramp, overwhelm the position, and start to take out this fourth base. Dude, Hero is so impressive. Um, and just the longevity of, like, his strength. The, the amount of time he's kind of been at near to or at the top is pretty ridiculous. This guy definitely deserves an ASL title, man. We've still got one more game here, guys. It's getting a little bit sad, though. Snow has been getting kind of dominated. Let's see if he can bring it back in this final match. If Hero can be taken down, if the beast can be slain. Let's go find out. Okay, guys, our final game here with Hero spawning at the top right hand corner. Snow down in the bottom right. My voice was feeling a little rough last night, so I decided to kick this over to tomorrow, to the next day. Today, I guess. Uh, where I'm going to be feeling a little bit better here and hopefully deliver some better casting to you guys. I don't know what's going on with me. Um, my wife got sick this week and I kind of got sick. You know when you, you feel like you should be sick or you know that you're going to get sick, but then it do never really comes, but it, that something kind of clings to you, you know? You, you don't really get sick, but you're kind of on the edge. I don't know how to explain it, but if you know that feeling, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, where it's like, well, is this actually going to hit or is it not? Well, maybe it's not. Well, actually, it kind of feels like it is, but you know, like, what the heck is going on right now? Anywho. A pool first here. Nine pool with an extractor trick to get out a 10th drone. That's going to be for the scouting. Going to get out there. Almost able to block that probe on the ramp. Always feels nice to get a few extra hits on the probe. As it's coming in, means that the probe can't 1v1 a drone later on. Uh, unless its shields, of course, fully recover. He just went out and grabbed some minerals, and he's going to come back. So he's trying to do some something to trick Snow there. Maybe get him to uh, come out and try to block the hatchery, and then be more surprised by the lings that were going to come out. But Snow checking the main, he did see that there was a pool. He will be making a zealot here at the front. The zealots are going to stay home and just cover that ramp. As they do. Ling's going to hit the field. And looks like he's going to keep one Ling behind to just chase this probe. While the other five go across the map. And this is a, a timeless classic here. A situation that we've seen a million times over. Is this going to be a forge? Yes, it is. Forge here. Not going to get super greedy. Like, uh, try like a mini build here. Try to get a cybernetic score at the front. He's going to be just a little bit safe. We'll go get that forge. And we should see a Nexus here soon. Looks like a little damage going onto this gateway. It's just more of an annoyance here for the Protoss. Because you have to set up this little wall once again. The probe. And keep the Zealot out in the front. But try not to get it surrounded. If it gets surrounded, you could be in a lot of trouble. Now, third base is going to come up here on Polypoid. Now, I think that Polypoid is a bit annoying with this third base. I think this is the worst position for Zerg on Polypoid, just from my perspective. And you guys might have a different perspective on this. You know, pro players might have a different perspective on this. I'm not sure. But for my money, I really feel like this is the worst positions for Zerg players. Because you get this natural, and you can't really take this as your third, which is your other gas base. And you can't really take this as your third, which is another gas base, because it's just so far away. Uh, from your rallies over here in your natural so you kind of get railroaded into taking this if you want to play a macro game and this base doesn't give you your third gas which means it's very hard to do something like uh like an aggressive mutilus play oh he just barely didn't get through there that's crazy that final hit from the zealot actually stopping that from getting through really really close to getting a run by there but i mean it would have been just a couple of links maybe one link getting into the main not the biggest deal in the world. It's just great for Snow that he doesn't have to worry about that now. 
The zealot gonna pop out here in the wall. Looks like he sees the number of lings with that probe and sends his zealots back home. And what I was trying to say, guys, is with this being a non-gas base, you're not gonna have a third gas. It's hard to do like a Mutalisk play. If you get the second gas early, you can still try to do like an Ogre Zerg Gamer play for sure. But it's hard to do like a big Mutalisk switch. You can barely produce like uh, Hydras off of six hatch or five hatch. Uh, with just two gases, you know, plus upgrades, plus all that other stuff. So trying to like pump Hydra and then pump out a bunch of Mutalists suddenly is nearly impossible. Same thing goes for Lurker. If you want to switch into Lurker, it's really tough because you just don't have the gas. You have to almost, you, have, you almost have to like throw down an extra hatch and switch prematurely into Ling. Have like a lot of Lings popping up because you just can't make non-stop hydra and lurker you're just gonna have way more minerals than gas so that's one uh, like that's one option just getting a lot of premature lings maybe getting a ling upgrade or something um the other option is to let the protoss player take their high ground base this one and take your fourth base a little bit earlier uh, so that you can get that gas and transition into lurker or into muta so that's just my perspective. I'm really not sure if that's um, if that's right, because it seems like Zerg players are fine just having like pro players are pretty fine just having this base for the most part. It seems like they're not um, too concerned about it. But um, for me, I just feel like it it kind of limits your play style a lot, makes it hard. Plus, I hate this base for putting down hatches here, dude. The most annoying thing in the world is uh, having a, I think, like this one. No, no, no. I think the worst one might be this one right here. Because your larva always go to the left-hand side, and there's no way to move them to the right. I mean, there's only a couple of hexes to actually build this on. There's almost no space up here, as you can see. I think you can just barely fit one, like, right there. It's super annoying, though, because the larva and eggs are always in the way. Um, and you need every single larva in this early game. It's not like you can just build something and cancel it in order to get make space so you can throw down that sixth hatchery. Um, he might throw down the sixth hatchery at a fourth base. That might actually be the play. So we are going to see five mutas pop out here. This is not a commitment to full-on muta production. We're going into Hydroden and an Evolution Chamber to get those upgrades out and make that... Uh, Eventual transition into Hydra. But we do want to get a few Mutas out just to stop a Zealot attack. But, oh man, Snow going for double Stargate here. This Mutalist play is going to get slapped down so hard. And he's going to have used a lot of his gas to pump these Mutas. This is bad, actually, for Hero. Um, Snow's going to get a lot of momentum from this play, I think. Because the Zealots are going to come out, the, the uh, Mutas are going to start to hit them, and then the Mutas are going to get smacked. Here we go, Mutas just getting thrown back here, and the Scourge are not going to connect. One Scourge connects. Dude, these Mutas do nothing now. I think he has to float around and actually start hitting this. That's his only choice right now. He's got to come in and start hitting probes, make it hard for snow to uh to execute this attack efficiently here because he's gonna lose so many overlords so we're gonna see probes going down here quite a few are gonna fall the defense here pretty good so far from hero you know what this is working out pretty darn well here he's gonna come back in and start to kill more overlords really important that he kills a lot of overlords here because if he sends these corsairs back to deal with this he's going to um you know, he's going to lose those probes and not get any compensation. So far, it looks like he got a little compensation with the Overlord kills. But this is still great for Hero. So the fact that he kept five, all five Mutas alive during that first engagement by sending in the Scourge and just kind of backing away um, is fantastic. He's actually ahead in drones now. So this is this is great. Really, really great stuff. Or hero, another cannon gonna warp here in the natural mineral line, and a DT gonna sneak out on the map. But I honestly think that he played this perfectly. 
It's gonna come back in one more time. Let's try to get a couple more probes. Probably get one, maybe. Nah, he's not even gonna get one probe, unfortunately. But, he has managed to pump out enough Hydra. Looks like the Hydra number is high enough. Now that it, it gets kind of scary for Snow. Snow, he's got Storm on the way. But his Storm is very late. You can see it's not even... It's almost 10 minutes. It's not even done. So, it, it, it's tough. Usually you want it, this to be done around like 8.30 to 9 minutes. Probably a little closer to 9 minutes is when it's usually done, but... Some players tend to get it faster. I know because I've tried to hit that nine minute timing, you know, with a big hydralis swell and being slapped down uh, by a couple of well-placed storms. And we'll see if he can uh, get these storms to connect here because so far this series, Hero's been really, really good at dodging them. Trying to get a couple kills with this Dark Templar. Time to send the Dark Templar up to top center, I think. We want to see if we can deny this fourth base, because like I said, no fourth gas. It's very hard to transition as Hero. Hero gets his six hatchery up now. He's got about 40 drones in the pocket. Probably will add on a few more, although he is pushing pretty heavily here towards the natural. He wants to actually deny, it seems like, the coming of the third base here for Snow. Ah, uh, fourth over here. You know, I kind of like it. An, a, a nice position here to take. If you're going to be pushing uh, over towards the Protoss third, kind of defending, it's kind of defending um, this base as well. All your rallies and everything are going to be coming this direction. It's like uh, creating a wall that hopefully Zealots won't be able to slip through. He's chasing down the Zealots right now because there's no actual base being thrown down at the moment. But... Pretty soon here, we are going to see Snow move out. Now, I did uh, see Lurker upgrade finish. How many do we have? Just four Lurkers. I think he's going to use these offensively. We come up here onto this high ground. I think that makes the most sense. Actually, instead, he's going to make a round of drones and just put down the Lurkers defensively. Uh, he's going to set this up maybe as a hold position or something. A lot of Zelts are making their way over here. Ooh, he really wants to take out that base, but instead he backs away, realizing that he might be getting surrounded. A little bit surprised by that. Surprised that uh, Snow didn't at least break off four Zealots to go and try and kill this. Um, four Zealots, if they're left unattended, can kill a hatchery pretty darn quick, especially with plus two. Doesn't quite have it. He doesn't have any upgrades on the way, actually. Wow, I'm surprised that uh, we don't see any upgrades. There's a plus two armor, I guess. Gonna be starting up here for snow. We've got plus one done. Plus two is nearly complete as well here for hero. High ground. I'm being held by some hydras and lurkers. And dude, hero is busting right now. He's got 128 supply and almost 400 APM. Let's see if he can stop this third base. It's gonna be a tough sell with Templar and Dragoon on this high ground. But maybe he can do it. Maybe he can actually br break this position. There's not a lot at the rally point as well. Only just one uh, lurker here. So potentially we could see him pull off like a big three base attack. Maybe Snow's just going to go set up everything on high ground, get his cannons here, and then just go directly for this rally point. That could be the play. Um... It's really good because right as you're attacking into here, everything that's up on this high ground wants to come and help, but it has to run down this ramp, and you just put one storm there, kills everything. Um, oh gosh, where are the zealots in this fight? Just fighting with Dragoon and Templar. Uh, you don't really want to do that until all the, the hydras have kind of been softened up a little bit. You've thrown down a few storms, you've... Uh, you know, thrown in some zealots to soak that damage and just deal a little bit of, of extra DPS. And then the hydras fall a lot faster to the dragoons. But he already traded off a few dragoons here on the left side for, you know, just a couple of hydras. Whoa, we're loading up a drop right now, right as Snow is coming into the rally point. Dude, he's got to unload here. <laughs> this is kind of a crazy moment. 
That's never what you want to see is the Protoss army attacking right as you're loading up. He's got to, you know, unload everything really, really quick here and start to fight this army. We don't have an observer with this force, though. Dude, big mistake here by Snow. Not having an observer right now. There it is. It's coming up. But he was almost able to break this rally point. This is really, really scary right now. What we're seeing from Hero. That's a lot of units, man. One observer. This is it. If he loses this observer, he's not going to be able to break this position. These two lurkers out in the front are very, very low. Let's see if he can get a couple hits off with his dragoons to finish them. He does. He will back away here now. Keeping those alive. Going to keep pumping up this dragoon number. We don't have, actually have anything in production right now. It's because we're actually spending a lot of our money on a nexus and some cannons. We will get back to that production here. Pumping out a bunch of the cheap units here. While he starts to get into that fourth base. Because he is running out of money. Here in the main and natural. As he rotates around to this uh, left hand side. Oh great storm there in the middle of this army. Dude that really hurts hero a lot. Those uh, units have been softened up quite significantly and the moment that everything sieges that all of these uh, lurkers burrow underground he just pulls away very nice skirmishing here from snow as he gets this fourth base online not a lot of cannons man he is skipping hard on the cannons right now hardly having any at all it means that he's very vulnerable to counterattacks, but his army is so strong But a few lurkers here, very stacked up lurkers. Just three cannons here in the bottom center. You can see these sending zealots along this path to make sure. Oh, another load up here. We're just catching it now. That is so many overlords being loaded. Oh, dude, this is such a doom drop. What a crazy, crazy move we're going to see out of Hero here. Unfortunately, all the Corsairs are waiting for this. This is two Stargate Corsair. He still has so many Corsairs left. Oh, man. I think Hero is probably going to lose this game, dude. He's going to lose a hatch over here. And watch this drop get eviscerated now. Ooh, dude. So many units are being killed off in the Overlords as they come in. He will be able to clear out all the Corsairs, it looks like. Oh, he didn't even drop out of that one. That's a little bit funny. Um, but he just didn't get the full payload into the main. And the army over here, I don't know. I think Snow's not paying attention here right now. And a lot of Dragoons are going down. He's actually paying attention in the main, trying to clean this up. I think he should be able to easily clear this, but he really needed to not lose his whole army um, while that was happening. Because now Hero can actually counterattack, maybe to the third, while the army moves to, to clear this. He's going to send Zealots. Oh, he's pulling everything back. He realizes that this army is coming. He needs to get over here. He's leaving just the bare minimum in the main to clear this out, which means that stuff won't trade as well, but he will have his full army in the front to potentially fight with this uh, counterattacking force. This is quite the back and forth that we've got right now. Only five bases to four. A lot of games of Zerg versus Protoss will end in this type of uh, position here. Five base to four base. Both players are starting to mine out. Zerg getting very low in the main and natural. Another drop going to come through. We're just sitting here on layer tech. Building masses of units. There's not any Corsairs left in the main base. So he's going to go for another drop here. And prepare himself for a counter attack from Snow. Because Snow could just go... Uh, attack this base or just go for the rally point right now here comes that drop uh, snow will return everything to the main uh, in order to clear this up now targeting down important buildings is going to be the key here can he pick off he's going to go for the forge i'd like to see him go templar archives and citadel if you can kill the uh, these buildings even the cyber Nenoscore at the end but focus these two first it slows down uh, that Templar add by so much. If you snipe, if you kill this and then you snipe Templar like this, he's just not going to have storms and you can overwhelm with Hydra. Uh, I'm really, I'm 
a little bit sad to see him not go for that. Finally, he will. But the storm is actually going to save it. So, you know, that's a bit of a bummer. Now, on the high ground, he's added on more cannons here. And he's got some storms waiting for the attack to come in. This is really good play from Snow. He's, you know, thrown his army together in such a way that he's actually going to be able to save... Uh, or almost save this base. Hold on. Maybe he can actually break this. I thought he was going to be able to save it. But there's just a few too many Hydras here. And now he's starting to lose probes. The Nexus went down in the main. That's not really a big deal. Although, you know, not being able to mine the depleted gas in there could be annoying. Okay, it's not quite depleted. So that is quite painful. He's not going to be on four gases anymore. But at least he can produce Templar. Uh, hero here. Gonna try to take another base in the top center, but he is starting to mine out. He is starting to get depleted everywhere here. Still quite a bit of gas here, but again, we didn't have a third gas here. Um, which does make things... Oh, he did get it! He came back in! Oh, hero. Beautifully done. He kills the Templar Archives. Exactly what I was hoping he'd do. Oh, but a second Templar Archives was built, and he just sees it now. That's hilarious. So he just rebuilt the Templar Archives, assuming that that was going to die. Um, Lurker's going to come in here from behind. Maybe this is just too much. Yeah, that is way too many Lurkers. And a great surround there. It's going to be the clincher here to end this game. Dude, Hero just so good. And the fact that he's always been this good, that he's just been this good for years and years and years, is incredibly impressive. You can see that Snow has made leaps and bounds since 2022 in terms of his overall gameplay, his stra strategic knowledge in this matchup, and his execution has uh, skyrocketed, honestly, in the past few years. But, I don't know, Hero, the consistency is king, man. This guy has been insanely good. He deserves an ASL title if he can... Finally get one. I don't know. Maybe he'll get one next year. Maybe he'll get one this year. We'll see what happens. But he certainly does deserve it. Anyways, guys. Bit of a blast from the past here. Snow versus Hero. Totally a different match. Two years ago than it is today. It's great to see the improvement, and I'll see you guys in the next video.